It's time to change your diaper, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Easton, Bauer, I need you to change his diaper. I have to go. You guys got it? No. All right, good. No. You're in good calls, buddy. Hey, everybody. It's Bill from MattTracker.com, and welcome to this episode of Behind the Mask. Now, if you've been following along, you might have noticed that I have not picked that Robin up yet, and I will not do it. He doesn't stand up, he does whatever he wants, and he keeps knocking over Batman and Bane, and I just can't have it. So I'm just letting him do it. That's it. I give up. But you shouldn't give up on trying to win one of the free mass computers. It's part of the giveaway on the channel, uh, brought to you by uh, Wes from Man Mask. He donated a uh, good portion of them, and we still have a few left. We've already announced two winners, and I'll be getting those out within the next week or two. As COVID-19 standards start to get more lax in my area, I'll have a better uh, feeling of going out and doing that. So they will go out, and congrats to the winners, and you could be next. It might not be announced on this video, but uh, maybe a future one. Um, and all you have to do is be subscribed, like, and comment, uh, and watch because it's great content. I mean, I'm biased, but you know, I think I have to be on that point. So thanks again, Wes, for, for your donation. And in this episode, we got a lot of positive feedback on the last one for agent profile, Gloria Baker. So I wanted to do another one and I had a few requests for Hondo. So I'd like to honor that. I know there's some other videos out there on Hondo McLean. Um, I've seen them. I don't remember how, like, I, I remember, I think Retro Blasting did one. And there's probably a few others. I, it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. And it was really well done. Uh, they do really good work over there. But I wanted to take it and put it in the same spin as Gloria's profile. And that's what I'm going to keep continuing doing with your suggestions on who you want to see next. So make sure you let me know in the comment uh, if there's somebody you want to see. Now, the first thing I think of when I think of Hondo is Hurricane. And that's not going to be the same for everybody. My reasoning is, and I'm going to touch on it more later, is that Hurricane is what first appears in the opening credits, but Firecracker is the vehicle he uses first. That he was voiced by Doug Stone, who, if you don't know, voiced a lot of characters on the show. Matt Tracker, Brusado, Dusty Hayes, Bruno Shepard. Uh, Maximus Mayhem and uh, Boris Bushkin, like the primary characters. There were also some, you know, supporting cast members that he did, um, but they're not really credited anywhere. Uh, Hondo appeared in only 21 episodes, which I thought was more looking back. Out of the 75, that's, that's not a lot. Uh, he first appeared in episode one, The Death Stone, and you might remember that's where he saved Scott when he should have not saved Scott. Um, I know that goes against his character. You can, you can tell his character is like very upstanding and compassionate and caring, but um, that was just a poor judgment call right there. Um, and his last appearance was actually pretty early on in the run in episode 53, the patchwork puzzle. I, I didn't realize until I went back into the research that he, basically stopped appearing after a while. I don't know why. Um, maybe it was backlash toward, uh, toward his outfit from the uh, <laughs> uh, hurricane from the toy line, but uh, we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, Hondo, his occupation was high school teacher. Uh, it varied, but a lot of times it would be basically like Rome, ancient Rome based. And 
he was an uh, expert in African geography, and he was also a weapons specialist and a field and tactical strategist. So I don't know where you get those skills between being a teacher, because my wife's a teacher and she has no time for anything. So that, that takes a lot. So kudos to Honda for that. Um, he, um, he had two different masks, Blaster 1 and Blaster 2, and two different vehicles, one with two different names, which we'll talk about in a minute, and an unproduced toy set, which we'll talk about. His Blaster 1 mask appeared in 14 episodes and had the ability to fire laser beams. Uh, Blaster 2 appeared in 7 and had the same power. I don't remember it being any different. It just fired a laser. So that's what I'm going with. Um, the, the funny thing is that there are reissues of other outfits. Like I'm look, I have the, the toy, the figure shelf here and there's reissues of other outfits, but not really, not really from series one to series two. And I think that's why Hondo has a different outfit than he does like in the cartoon. The cartoon, he wears his Blaster 1 outfit with the Blaster 2 mask, but in the in the toy line, he has literally the worst, the worst outfit, uniform, whatever you want to call it, out of the entire line, which then is also taken and um, repainted to have two other different figures, one of the European uh, figure pack, uh, two packs, and one of the adventure pack, uh, sea attack. Firecracker is the first vehicle that he does drive. Uh, it's a recon truck, a pickup truck that turns into a recon truck. Basically, it's a truck that goes a little bit higher up and backwards. I've talked about it. Um, it has thermal detonators, which that's pretty cool. I guess, uh, I guess they took that from Star Wars. It has the, the tire shredder that fires off the back, not the shredder shredder. Uh, freeze cannons and hypno headlights. It also includes a motorcycle that can detach from the back. And I remember it, um, I, I remember it in use twice. It's probably more, but I, um, my research doesn't have uh, more than that in the cartoon. So if I'm wrong on that, please correct me. Firecracker would have numerous co-pilots, most of them being Buddy. It would make 20 appearances in the cartoon, and it would be, quote-unquote, destroyed in episode 29, A Matter of Gravity. But the weird thing is, is that it turns up later in episodes 54, 62, and 63 with Buddy as the pilot. So, I don't really know, I know there's no continuity with Mask, or very little of it. I don't know how or why that came to be. Uh, maybe Buddy was working on it. <laughs> maybe he was taking that smushed firecracker from a matter of gravity. And maybe he was uh, spending his time doing that. Maybe that was his hobby. But yeah, it was kind of weird. I, I, when I, until I went back and rewatched the episodes, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that it lived on past there whether that is episodes out of order in the way that they were you know, shown on television. I don't know. That could be the case, but without anybody, you know, from the, from the cartoon be able to confirm that kind of hard to tell. So, uh, so if you thought there was continuity there, there's not according to whatever the episode guides are for it. So kind of keep that in mind. And I, I, I like Firecracker. It's, it's not one of my favorites. It always, I always felt like there could have been a little bit more with it, but I guess I do like the simplicity of it, but that's kind of it, really. I don't know. Hurricane has an otter tale to tell. Uh, first of all, if you've watched the cartoon, which you have, and if you've watched the opening intro 10,000 times, which I'm sure you have, you'll notice that not only does the Blaster 2 mask appear on Hondo, but it's also Hurricane. So it makes you wonder, why? I, I don't know. 
It wasn't even called Hurricane at that point. It was Night Stalker. So keep that in mind too. We'll go, I want to touch on the name change and my, my theory behind it. I don't know if it's correct or not, but it's something that I, I researched. I tried to do this for all the names that had name changes. And this is the only one I really found any kind of concrete story to go behind. So take it for what it's worth. Just me speaking to you about a theory. But before we get there, uh, Hurricane slash Night Stalker appeared in eight episodes, four each for Night Stalker and four each for Hurricane. It's a 57 Chevy. It transforms into a field command post. That's the official title. I always thought it was a tank. I mean, I don't know. It kind of looks like a tank to me. Um, I always found it to be one of the more iconic vehicles, not just like, well, not just from the mass line, like toy wise, but out of the 80s itself. Um, the, the design of it, it's so sleek. It's hard to overlook in any collection. It usually draws your eye to it pretty quickly if you're looking at a large collection. Like, you know, if you're looking behind me, that might stand out more than other things. That's, that's always me anyway. I noticed that when I'm at toy shows, if a table has a hurricane on it, I see it right away. I don't know if that's just me being crazy and having like a radar for it, but it does stand out in my opinion. And I touched a little bit on his toy version of the outfit uniform. I, again, I don't know what fully happened there, but I'm, I'm guessing that they weren't really at the point where they were redoing outfits yet, like repainting. So that's probably why they came up with that. And I'm sorry, Hondo. I'm sorry that happened. Uh, the vehicle itself had night vision scanning, multiple blasters, cutting lasers, uh, the spare tire. These vehicles had a lot of spare tires, I guess, and a saw blade. Saw blade was like, you know, kind of came out of the back of it a little bit. And he would also feature in an unreleased toy from series four called Ramp Up. Now, when I say unreleased, I mean unreleased as a actual toy itself. There are prototypes out there, which you can see on the website, and you can get your own 3D printed one, which there's links um, on the website and also a link in the description as well if you want to get one yourself. There's not a lot of information on it. Um, there's an official kind of like actual pamphlet that shows like, hey, look, it's coming, spring of 88. And the, the way it reads is functional power lift converts into fighting tank with two pivoting blaster guns and a powerful firing rocket. Top field lieutenant, Honda McLean, with new blaster mask, mans the control panel. Now, the reason why it was a little palsy there is because it's a yellow background with white text. Yeah, that's not, that's not easy to read. So kudos for that one, guys, kudos. Um, so it, it, was, it was coming, but it never, it never came to be. And I don't know why that's the case. I would imagine that, and I, I speculated on this before, but it was probably, they probably had the run ready to go and they got to a point where it just wasn't like, you know, economically viable to produce it, to even try essentially. So uh, again, there are some prototypes out there. I know of at least three. So if you can find one, a real one, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. But if you're an avid collector, diehard collector and have a couple grand to spend, that's probably what you're looking at on it. But, you know, three printing one is enough for me, uh, especially because I have a mortgage to pay and a little one to feed. So I'm fine with that. Now it's time for my theory. So you have a name, Night Stalker and you change it to Hurricane. I like both names. And if they kept it as Night Stalker, I think I still would have liked it as much. But I did some research and I looked up crimes around 1985, like mid 80s time. And there was a serial killer that went by the name of Richard Ramirez 
who was captured in 1985. And you can guess his nickname, Night Stalker. I'm assuming that's where the name change came in. And I'm assuming that some of the episodes were already produced before that happened, or, you know, done already. Um, and you can't really blame Kenner or DIC for changing it on the fly like that. I would too. And that's the only thing I could really find. Um, again, like other ones that I haven't really been able to find anything on, like um, uh, Jackal and Barracuda. Like, I, I don't know. There's, I couldn't find anything that really kind of would have led to a name change like that. But this actually has some, some weight to it, at least something to look at and something to think about. Don't think about this monster, but think about maybe there was a reason. I don't know. But I'm always going to remember Hondo as the person who saved Scott and ruined my life. But I want to know what your thoughts are on Hondo, um, what your favorite you know, blaster mask was, one or two, the design. Um, which vehicle did you like the best? And what do you think of my theory on the name change? If you have a theory on it as well, I would love to hear it because that's what it's all about. It's about us talking mask. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe to help keep mask alive. And until next time, this is Bill from mattracker.com and I'll talk to you later. Just gotta live the nation